What's going on everybody? This is Jamie from Sharon at Sea. Hey, I'm here to bring you a month in review uh, with regards to all the new cruise news that's going on out there. I wanted to touch on a couple things you may or may not be familiar with and uh, Sharon was nice enough to let me get in front of the camera and tell you guys a little something about what happened here uh, in the last month in new exciting cruise news. All right, so let's get started with some news from Carnival Cruise Lines. There's a little cruise line you guys may have heard of. Um, one thing that happened here in December, if you're a fan of Wheel of Fortune, you might have been some of the first ones to know about this, but Carnival has come up with a name for its new XL cruise ship. This is a ship that should be coming out in uh, 2020, and hopefully here in the next 30 days or so, you can start seeing itineraries and making your, your uh, reservations to get on that bad boy. The name of their newest ship is gonna be Mardi Gras. Now, if that sounds familiar, it should, if you're a fan of cruising, because that was the name of Carnival's first ever cruise ship. Um, so Carnival Mardi Gras will be coming out. Uh, the new XL ship, it's gonna be amazing. A new design, a new hull design. Everyone's excited about it, including Sharon, who I know is probably feverishly trying to get us booked on that bad boy so we can be some of the first ones on it. So uh, congratulations, Carnival, your newest ship, Carnival Mardi Gras. Now, another thing that happened was Carnival announced that they're going to be raising the gratuities on their drinks and their drink packages from the existing 15%. They're going to bump it up to 18%. Now, I know a lot of folks are like, whoa, whoa, why are you bumping up the charges? Well, they are kind of getting in line with some of the other cruise um, uh, companies out there. Royal Caribbean, who is uh, currently running at 18% gratuity automatically, and NCL, which if I'm not mistaken, is at 20%. So Carnival is just getting in line with everybody else. Uh, automatic gratuities on drinks on your cheers package is going to come out at um, 18% now. Make sure I say that right. 18% now as opposed to the uh, previous 15%. Now probably the newest news is coming out for Carnival Cruise Lines and you may have heard about this. Uh, it was literally just announced within the last 24 hours. I mean technically I'm doing December news. It kind of came out on January 1st but shh. Nobody's paying attention to that, so we'll just keep that between you and me. Uh, Carnival just announced that they are going to be charging a nominal fee for all room service purchases, with the exception of the continental breakfast items. I think you're talking about your coffee, your Danish, your pastries, and some basic things like that. But anything else on the menu, you will see a charge for. So anything from a dollar for a dinner salad uh, to four dollars for your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and uh, and you know it'll go on from there for uh, 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 larger items and extended items on the menu. Now, Carnival a while ago already started charging for some late night uh, uh, meal options, kind of like, you know, chicken wings, quesadillas, things like that. So if you get a lot of room service from them, you're used to that already. And uh, they say they're just getting in line with the competition of the cruise lines. They're also doing it to minimize waste. I see a little bit of those points. I'm sure they're also doing it to make a little money. I mean, that's what they're there for. They're there to make a profit. So Carnival has announced uh, a small charge. That's gonna be happening right away here in January, right out of the gate. So if you're cruising uh, next month, um, like we are, uh, you can look forward to a little bit of a, a charge on your room service tab uh, for getting those late night snacks. Looks like some folks are gonna have to be hitting up the buffet early in the day and getting a little to-go package, if you know what I'm talking about. Now, those first couple of things were kind of like operational changes in the way Carnival is doing business. So one last thing for Carnival, um, whoa, Carnival, lifeboat overboard. So apparently the other day on the Carnival Dream, which oddly enough is a ship that Sharon and I and Matthew were just on a few weeks ago uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, out of nowhere and for a reason unknown as of yet, the Carnival Dream lost a lifeboat. One of the lifeboats fell, went crashing into the water. Uh, it did obtain damage, a piece of uh, one end of it got a big chunk taken out of it. And um, they're not really sure how it happened. There are investigations going on. Uh, it's a little concerning when you hear a story like that, like how exactly did a lifeboat fall from a secure uh, spot and land in the water. And what's also kind of interesting is they didn't know how to get the lifeboat back up again, maybe because of the damage was causing it to not be able to be lifted back up. So they had to abandon the lifeboat for the time being out at sea. Now they did go and they took all the supplies and everything off of the lifeboat. So right now it's just kind of a shell with nothing in it. And I'm sure they're going to make arrangements for it to go out and be recovered at some point. But kind of interesting. Imagine uh, sitting there, I don't know, you're looking over the side, looking at the beautiful waves, the ocean, uh, things like that. And you just happen to notice a lifeboat come cruising on by and turned out it's from the Carnival Dream. So 
Um, I don't know. Let's keep an eye on that stuff, Carnival. We know you can do it. Okay, now let's go on to a little Royal Caribbean news. Now, if you've been on a Royal Caribbean cruise, there's one thing you may recall. The kids love it. It is the DreamWorks Parade and all the DreamWorks characters that you can find on those cruise ships. Well, guess what, folks? Starting in April 1st, Royal Caribbean has announced they are cutting ties with DreamWorks. That's right. They will no longer be having all the DreamWorks characters, DreamWorks parades, and um, you know DreamWorks in general being affiliated with the cruise ships. They've made a major decision that they're going to break away from that relationship and they're going to be featuring a whole bunch of other things that they offer on a regular basis. Now they're going to be focusing a lot on non-DreamWorks activities um, such as laser tag, um, bungee jumping, all kinds of cool stuff they have. Uh, they have a tremendous amount of activities you can do on those ships and uh, those activities are going to be introduced uh, to some of their other ships including Mariner of the Sea, Independence of the Sea, and soon on the Navigator of the Sea. So you'll be able to see uh, some new activities uh, going on. Um, you know, spokespeople for Royal say they hope that this will go unnoticed. Uh, other ships like Symphony of the Seas did not have any of those activities yet anyway. And they're already doing new things, which includes some of their water uh, events and, and shows and things like that. So it's a major deal for Royal Caribbean. And uh, we sure hope it goes okay for them. Um, I hope we don't have a lot of kids that are going to be bummed out that that DreamWorks parade is no longer there. Okay, so now we're going to transition from kind of a sad story about Royal getting rid of the DreamWorks to an amazing, happy, joyful story from Norwegian Cruise Line. If you're sensitive and emotional like I am, you may want to get a box of Kleenex next to you because this one might be a little bit of a tearjerker. Now on December 29th, Norwegian Cruise Line celebrated a centennial birthday for Rose Zellman. Now I know you're saying, Jamie, yeah, okay, a birthday party on a cruise ship. What's news about that? Well, let me tell you something. If you got that, the centennial birthday, it's her 100-year birthday. She's 100 years old. It was her 32nd Norwegian Cruise Line cruise, and the event was celebrated by the staff, the audience, and everyone alike. Now, Rose enjoyed an exclusive dinner uh, with the captain at the Cirque Dreams Epicurean show. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right and if I'm a little off. Don't hold me to it. I mean, it's not an easy thing to say, but the Cirque Dreams Epicurean Show. I'll say it one more time. Um, then she was invited on stage and she was presented with a birthday cake and the whole audience, crew, and everyone in the joint sang her a big rendition of Happy Birthday. Um, it was an amazing celebration for Rose celebrating her 100th birthday on board a Norwegian Cruise Line cruise, her 32nd one. And um, it's a neat little story behind that. Um, she had traveled a lot with her husband. And her husband had passed away a number of years ago. Now, prior to his passing, she had never been on a cruise before, but she made friends with a gentleman named Omar Obeso, who was an onboard concierge with Norwegian Cruise Line. Well, finally, in 2005, Omar talked Rose into going on a cruise, and she had been hooked uh, ever since. Uh, like I said, since 2005, she had gone on numerous cruises, and uh, just this past December, December 29th, Rose turned 100 with a huge celebration. So congratulations, Rose. You are amazing. And uh, I don't know, may you see 100 more? That's a fantastic story. All right, so let's change up the gears a little bit from um, Rose celebrating her 100th birthday on board the Norwegian Epic to some major news for a couple of cruise ports here um, that happened in December. Uh, December 9th, I think it was Sunday, December 9th, the Port of Miami hosted over 52,000 passengers on a record-breaking day. Uh, I think they had like seven to eight ships in port in one day, and they, uh, they assisted over 50,000 passengers. It was an amazing day. And I mean, if you think about it, I mean, imagine uh, uh, the demographic of all these people getting off the ship, getting on the ship, and that many people crossing paths. It was the worst day and the best day for so many different people um, who were uh, getting ready to cruise out of the port of Miami. Then we follow that up here as we get to the end of December, December 26th in St. Martin. On that day, they had seven ships for almost 37,000 passengers in St. Martin. Now, I mean, compare the two, 52,000 in the port of Miami. All right, that doesn't sound like that big a deal. When you talk about almost 37,000 people in, in St. Martin, that is unbelievable. Now, prior to last year's hurricane, St. Martin was the number one port in uh, cruise passenger spending as far as dollars and cents go, and the number two port 
for crew of cruise passenger spending. Uh, that's how big it was. And it looks like things are starting to come back again. So that is tremendous news if you're a fan of uh, some of the Caribbean islands like St. Martin. You know, I love ending Sharon at Sea cruise news with some good heartfelt stories. And um, after a couple rough ones there from some cruise lines that were making some changes uh, that may or may not be that welcomed by some of the passengers, it's nice to hear the great story about Rose and St. Martin making a huge comeback after last year's devastating hurricane. So from everyone here at Sharon at Sea headquarters and the Sharon at Sea news department, this is Jamie saying make sure that you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content from Sharon at Sea. And by all means, everyone, and this is very important, happy cruising.